back to the channel. I'm Modi J and we are locked in. This is that recap for House of the Dragon Season 2, Episode 3. Now, officially, the war has begun. No one knows exactly where it started, and we're going to get into that information when we break down this recap. Now, if you like House of the Dragon content, breakdowns, theories, recaps like this, then hit your subscribe button and turn on your notification bell so you get something every time I upload. Make sure you hit that like button. And also, before we get started, comment, are you green or are you black? Which side are you so we know who we're talking to in the comments? Now let's go ahead and jump into it. This is the recap of House of the Dragon, and we gotta make sure that Alicent knows that Rhaenyra isn't playing either. So, choose wisely, green or black. This is the recap of episode three, House of the Dragon. We start the episode off in a field, there's cows grazing, and this is over by Red Fork in an old mill. We see a young Bracken Knight, Sir Amos, and then walking up to him is a Blackwood Knight. Now, Team Green is the Brackens, and they're gonna be fighting against the Blackwoods who are on Team Black. They come up and they tell him, you guys aren't allowed over here. This is our territory, and who moved those stones? Now, they're a little bit bullying over here, and they push one of them down. Well, Sir Amos pulls out his sword, and they laugh at him and say, you wouldn't dare attack us. Well. The next scene we see is Sir Amos and all, all the people that are part of the Brackens laid out, sword in his neck. It got ugly, quick. Back at Dragonstone, we see Princess Rhaenyra and the queen that never was, and they're talking. Well, right now they're burying the bodies of the twins, Eric and Eric, one with an A, one with a E. And you remember, Eric took his life because he unalived his brother, Eric, and then he unalived himself because he took an oath to protect the throne no matter what. So he unalived himself. Now the queen that never was is saying Otto Hightower had nothing to do with this. Even though we despise Otto, he wouldn't allow this to go down. Now Princess Rhaenyra is saying, nah, Allison sent this hit over here. And the queen that never was says, just like you sent the hit to unalive a kid in the bed, well, she didn't send that hit, and that's what the queen that never was is saying. We don't know who did this, but we can confirm that Otto wouldn't do this. But in a couple of years, decades, no one's going to know where this actual war even came from. Because it could have started when they lost Eamon's eye back when they were kids. The small council is called to talk about the current events that have transpired. Well, we know that Eric is unalive, and that was Sir Christian Cole's plan. It didn't work. We know that Otto Hightower isn't the hand anymore, so there's no law and order in this small council. Everyone's just talking. Queen Allison, she's trying to keep everybody in order because she knows with Aegon, her son, and Sir Christian partnered together, they're going to be running wild. So now they're trying to figure out how can they get this off of the plate, the Brackens versus the Blackwoods, so it doesn't look like they actually started this little war that's going on. Because as I mentioned earlier, we don't know where it's coming from. So Sir Christian says, listen, we'll go out there and we'll take over. King Aegon says, you'll take Aemon with you. And he's playing with that Valyrian steel dagger. So right now, it looks like they're getting prepared for war. And Sir Christian, he wants to be the leader of it. Queen Rhaenyra goes out to talk to Missyra. Now remember, she was supposed to be leaving, but she seen Eric and she turned around and didn't get on the ship. Now she's the one that actually put in the word and got Queen Renera saved. So now when Renera goes and talks to her, she's saying, why did you leave? She said, well, I saved your life. You should be trying to reward me for it. And what she wants as a reward is to be on the council, basically be up there when they're making decisions. Now, Renera is thinking about it, but she does know she owes this woman. And now Mercera is saying that they will pay for everything that they did. And she knows the inner workings of everything that's going on. So she might be very, very valuable for Queen Rhaenyra. And she's listening to it, but she tells her, don't take my kindness for a weakness. Then they look off in the distance and you see Sea Smoke. Now Sea Smoke is Rhaenyra's late husband's dragon, and he's a little bit restless out there. And she says, maybe Sea Smoke is lonely. Damon, AKA Day Day flies over to Harrenhal. Now this is the largest castle in Westeros and it's over in the Riverland. And when he gets in here, he's greeted by Sir Simon Strong. Now this castle is ran down, but what Damon is doing is inquiring about where is his loyalty at? And he says he's loyal 
to Renera. Now, he also asked about Lord Lowry's, and he says that guy is disgraced. Clubfoot, somehow his father was burned up, and he's the only one living. So, yeah, he's disgraced here. But Damon wants to use this castle. He wants to make it a garrison. So all the people, the Brackens, get them in here in the Riverlands is about 40,000 soldiers and use this castle. And he also makes it clear that he doesn't want to be called the Prince. He wants to be called your grace. So if he can get these 40,000 members to come and fight for him, he'll take over this castle and be quote unquote the king. We get introduced to Allison's brother, Sir Gwyn, and she wants him to go on the ride along with Sir Christian. Now. We already mentioned how Sir Christian and King Aegon are trying to take over everything and run it how they want. Alicent knows that something isn't right. And when her brother comes, he says, hmm, it's interesting to know that my father who served three kings as the hand has been replaced by someone that came from humble beginnings, basically not any kind of royalty. You were actually a worker and now you're part of a security detail. But Sir Christian is trying to get out of this and saying, no, this trip is going to be a tough journey. But Allison's brother, he's going to be the follow on because she wants someone there that she can trust to at least watch over what Sir Christian is about to do because she's noticing how things are starting to be put into King Aegon's head from Sir Christian. Back at Dragonstone, we're getting the layout of what's potentially going on. Now, there's no dragons. There's no boats. The high towers. They haven't really put nothing into motion yet. Aegon and them, they're just now getting out. But what Rhaenyra is saying is, listen, we're gonna get these armies together. We're gonna get people from the North and the Vale to help us fight this. Now the council was telling Rhaenyra they need to get the dragons and go out there and just try to wipe everything out. But Rhaenyra is saying no, because that opens up a potential of our own destruction. Meaning if we go dragon for dragon, what if they get us cornered one time and they get the best of us with their dragons. We're gonna win this on the ground with soldiers. Now the council, they don't wanna do it this way because they know it'd be easier to do it with dragons. But Renera thinks that over there at King's Landing, they're not gonna do anything out of the ordinary. They're gonna just try to fight this out without dragons. Renera is talking to Reyna and remember she informed her that you're gonna to have to go off. You're gonna to have to take my kids and Joffrey you're going to have to get out of here and get to safety because what we need for you to do is carry on the potential for our family name to carry on. And we're giving you four eggs, four hatchlings to give to the other family in return for them giving us soldiers in the north and from the Vale. So right now she's a little nervous to go off. But remember, she doesn't have a dragon. She's the younger sister of Corley's and she doesn't have a dragon. Now her sister Bela is there and she's saying, listen. This would probably be the best, no disrespect, for you to get away from all the danger. Now, she will be in charge of Renera's kids while she's gone, and Renera is saying bye to her kids because this war is about to kick off. We see Aegon getting suited up to go to war. He said, I'm gonna go take Sunfire, I'm gonna fly out with Sir Christian, we're gonna hold this down. Now, he's putting on Aegon the Conqueror's armor because he feels like he's about to go out there. Now, Lord Lowry's comes in, he's saying, um, your grace with all due respect you shouldn't leave the castle because if you leave King's Landing Allison and Amon they're gonna try to seize control of everything and they're gonna get people to turn on you because once you're out there there's no one here controlling what's going on now remember Lord Lowry's is the one that's been putting information in King Aegon's ear because he wants to move up these ranks one way or another he's gonna get there so now we hear King Aegon saying, my father said he would never do good with a master of whispers, but look at me now, I'm needing you. That's because he wants to hear what's going on. That gossip is getting to Aegon and he doesn't want to seem weak and he doesn't want to lose his power. Out on the street of silk where everything your heart can desire goes down, drugs, liquor, women, we see a guy that's telling everyone he is the half brother, the dragon seed the illegitimate child, the half-brother of King Viserys and Daemon, the uncle of the rightful heir to the throne, Queen Rhaenyra. Well, he's doing all of this lying and talking. King Aegon comes in, and remember, he was supposed to fly out, but he changed his mind. And one of the members on his detail, he's never been laid. 
So out on Silk Road, they are out here and they take him into the tavern. Then they go into the whorehouse and who they see in there? Prince Amon. And he's laying up with one of the sex workers. Sir Kristen and his troops are out in the open field and he's talking about, hey, we're exposed. We need to try to make some different maneuvers in order to get out of the line of anyone watching us. Now, while they're out here, they look up and in the distance, they see Bela. Now, Bela's on her dragon. And let me tell you, Moon Dancer is putting in that work. She dives down at them. They're headed to the tree line. Sir Christian and all of his soldiers, they get into the trees. She's flying around and she's looking for them because she was about to attack. Now, Sir Christian is saying, y'all need to listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Now, Allison's brother, he's like, man, I'm in your debt now. He's scared, them horses are tired. But let me tell you, Rhaenyra, when she gets his information back, they definitely gonna be on the hunt. Now everyone is putting that pressure on Queen Rhaenyra. Bela said it was Sir Christian and a half a dozen knights. She's like, are you sure? From that height, you, you surely couldn't be sure. And Bela said, I wasn't that high up. I didn't engage even though she wanted to, but she seen who it was and everyone confirmed it. The Raven said that it was Sir Christian Cole. Now, Rhaenyra's council was telling her we need to attack now before this gets out of hand. But Rhaenyra doesn't want to attack using dragons because she knows what's going to come with this. So she leaves the room and says, I heard what everyone had to say, but let me take it into consideration. Some of them are talking about we need to go back to our own lands and start fortifying what we have just in case they try to come and attack us. And they're also saying that Damon, he needs to be the one worrying the most. Damon's still out and about. He's over at Heronar and he's in the living quarters and he has two swords locking the door. But out of nowhere, he hears doo, 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 doo. And it seems like someone's trying to get into his room. He grabs his sword, goes out of the room. He doesn't see anyone. But as he goes down the hall, he starts to hear some humming. And when he opens up the door, it's Renera, but the younger version of Renera. And she's in here, sewing the head back on the young kid that was unalive by the orders of Damon. And she's saying, I have to clean up the mess that you did, Damon. This blood is on Damon's hand. Queen Renera devises a plan. Now she does find out how she can potentially get here. And well, she does sneak in and she actually has the one-on-one -on -one with Allison. Now Allison is scared at first, but Renera's saying, listen, if you scream, they're gonna take me away. They're gonna probably unalive me, but I'm gonna get you first. So it's gonna be a lose-lose. But she starts reminiscing, saying, hey, listen, when my brother was born, me and you knew that something evil could come out of this. Now, I know you don't have anything to do with it, and I don't have anything to do with this, so we need to come up with a plan on how we can just squash this whole thing. Now, we know Aegon has a mind of his own. We know Damon wants to do his own thing. So these two, even though Rhaenyra has the power, Alicent doesn't. She's not in charge. Her son is. Then we found out that Allison, when she was talking to King Viserys, he told her when their son was born that he's the one that's going to unite everything. He's the promised child. Now, when Rhaenyra hears this, she's like, wait, my dad told you about that? The Aegon the Conqueror? You know that story? That means you have all the power to stop this. Now, initially we were thinking Allison couldn't do anything, but according to Rhaenyra, Hearing this information from her father, Allison is the one that needs to stop this because her son is the one that can unite everything. Now, Allison's like, you need to get out of here before you get caught because she doesn't want anything to do with this at this point. Renera knows what she's got to do. They're going to have to go to war at this point. All right, there you go. The recap for episode three of House of the Dragon. Let me know what you think about it. Was this a good move for Renera to try to get in there talk to Allison and squash all of this or was she really risking it because you know anything could happen especially if Aegon was to find out that she was there also how do you think this is going to play out with Damon this is for the people that have not read the book how do you think it's going to turn out for Damon basically trying to get everything to fall in place for him 
Let me know what you think. I'm Mode IJ. This is the recap of episode three of House of the Dragon. I say this is probably one of the best shows on television right now. If I said something that you liked or you just want to hear about House of the Dragon, hit that like button. Definitely hit that subscribe button. Thanks for watching. I'm out. Jimmy on the beat, boy.